module six, tendering and awarding the contracts. Outline, overview of PPP tender and award process, special characteristics of the PPP tender process, time to submit offers, assessment and preparation by the prospective bidders, evaluation of proposals, negotiation with a preferred bidder, award and contract signature. Overview of PPP tender and award process. PPP tendering is a critical step in the process of procuring PPP. Generally, there are four main stages into which any tender process may be divided. Pre-qualification. In open tenders with a pre-qualification stage or short listing, in a process with a short listing or pre-selection of candidates. Bid period, from launching through bid submission or reception. In open tenders without pre-qualifications or from invitation to offer or to negotiate through bid submission in other processes. Bid evaluation, including qualifications in a one stage open tender an award the procuring agency receives, analyzes or assesses, evaluates, and selects a winner, usually named the preferred bidder. Contract signature from decision to award to the signing of the contract. Financial close may occur at the end of this period or at a later time after contract signature. The tender award and contract signature process entails the design of RFP appropriately, application of the general principles of good procurement, in bracket, transparency, fairness, and so on. Recognizing the complexities of PPPs, recognizing the specific characteristics of the project in question, following the applicable laws and policy requirements governing procurement, in the relevant jurisdiction. The tender process has most of the features and characteristics of the public procurement process. However, some stages and steps have specific characteristics, including the following. Time to prepare and submit offers. This will usually be longer than in a conventional procurement. It is therefore essential to grant the bidders sufficient time for proper preparation. Interaction with the market or bidders. An initial interaction or communication process should be carried out before the tender launch occurs. Risk of challenges to the process. Due to the incremental complexity of the contract and process, the risk of a challenge is considered higher in PPPs than in a conventional procurement. Time for evaluation. PPP evaluation requires knowledge of both the PPP's technical and financial features. The government can choose between several types of tender processes based on the identification of potential partners or the source of funding, in bracket national budget versus donors open tender or one state tender process, open tender with pass or fail pre-qualification or two stage open tender, restricted procedure, shortlisting with one bid, negotiated process, shortlisting with negotiation or best and final offer, BAFO, dialogue process, interaction process. special characteristics of the PPP tender process. On this table, under type and features, we have open tender or one state tender process, qualification approach, submission of qualifications. We have the SOQ are called and submitted together with proposals, requests for qualifications, RFQ and RFP, are integrated in one document. 
qualification approach that is shortlisting, no shortlisting. Time for closing and issuing request for proposal, RFP and contract. The RFQ and, RF and RPF are integrated and closed together. Issuers of tender package at one time. Under negotiation versus interaction or dialogue, negotiations and dialogue are not permitted after the tender is launched. Requests by the bidders for clarification is allowed and responses are public during the bid phase. Bidding and selection approach, that is submission of proposals, only one bid and one straightforward decision on our D will, with no negotiation. Country examples. Most countries in Latin America and Spain, quite common in the EU vis-a-vis -vis competitive dialogue. Under open tender with pass or fail pre-qualification or two-stage open tender, the RFQ is issued in advance of the RFP to qualifying bidders under pass or fail criteria, no shortlisting. The RFP is closed after the SOQ are received, the contracts may be refined during the RFQ phase. Negotiation versus interaction or dialogue not allowed. For clarification requests and response during the bid phase are permitted. Bidding and selection approach, submission of proposals. Only one bid and one straightforward decision on awardee with no negotiation. Country examples. Colombia, India, Mexico, and some other countries in Latin America for some projects. Restricted procedure, shortlisting with one bid, under qualification approach, submission of qualification SOQ, as in pre-qualification, the RFQ is issued in advance of the invitation to propose qualifying bidders, the essential feature of this type qualifying bidders shortlisted are shortlisted. Under time for closing and issuing request for, for proposal RFP and contract as an open tender with pre-qualifications. -quali pre Negotiation versus interaction or dialogue not allowed, but clarifications are usual as in the former types. Bidding and selection approach, only one bid and one straightforward decision on our D with no negotiation as in former types. Country examples, considered an option under the EU regulations, but less commonly used than the former types. Negotiated process, shortlisting with negotiations or best and final offer, BAFO. Qualification approach, the SOQ is issued and assessed in advance as in the restricted procedure, qualification approach, shortlisting as in the restricted procedure, time for choosing an issuing request for proposal, RFP and contract. The RFP is commonly closed at the same time as the RFQ. The fundamental characteristics of the selection process and contracts should be defined and explained in the RFQ. Negotiation versus interaction or dialogue. Negotiations permitted by definition. Bidding and selection approach. Consecutive, consecutive or sequential bids are frequently used, commonly under a BFO process. Country examples. Considered in the EU by legislation, more marginal yet traditional method of procurement in the EU. Type and features, the dialogue process, qualification approach, the SOQ is issued and assessed in advance as in the restricted procedure, qualification approach, shortlisting, shortlisting as in the restricted procedure, time for closing and issuing. The RFP may be, may be re redefined during the RFQ phase. For example, in the EU, it may be also closed at the same time as the RFQ, fundamental characteristics of the selection process and contract should be defined and explained in the RFQ. Negotiation versus international dialogue. 
Negotiations are usually not permitted, EU, but the contract and some aspects of the RFP may be discussed and redefined during the dialogue or interactive process. Bidding and selection approach. The dialogue method typically considers only one bid after dialoguing, refining the contract and some aspects of the RFP. Country examples. An option regulated by legislation in Egypt, regulated option by the EU legislation for specific types of projects, meeting some features mainly related to complexity used in some states in the United States. The interaction process. Qualification approach. The SOQ is issued and assessed in advance as in the restricted procedure. Qualification approach. Shortlisting as in the restricted procedure. Time for closing and issuing requests, proposal and contract. The fundamental characteristics of the selection process and the contracts should be defined and explained in the RFQ. The RFP is typically finalized following the completion of the shortlisting process. The RFP and contract are discussed during the interactive process and may be refined or clarified by the government if necessary. Final negotiations are usually conducted with one or more bidders after the initial evaluation of bids. Bidding and selection approach. Following the issue of the RFP and contract bid and contract, bidders refine their proposals through interactive workshops with the government. Bidders then submit a single complete proposal. Country example. This is the standard approach used in Australia and New Zealand. Time to prepare and submit offers. Requirement for proper assessment and preparation by the prospective bidders. It is good practice that procuring authorities provide bidders sufficient time to prepare sound and high quality offer. A PPP bid is more demanding than a conventional procurement in terms of resources that is internally dedicated to advisors and time is in essence a matter of cost. Looking for the right balance is therefore a tricky issue, which is often sought within a range of 30 to 90 days for open tender processes. Although in many projects, 90 to 120 days may be preferable to ensure good quality responses. In open tender models, one of the common pitfalls in a PPP procurement is that the procuring authority allows bidders insufficient time for this work. It is also good practice to require the proposal to be valid, that is binding on the bidder for a specific time, that is limiting the validity of the proposal so that the bidders are protected from undue delays in evaluation and awarding. After that period, for example, 180 days, the proposal is no longer binding on the bidder. If the procuring authority has not yet awarded the contract but is continuing the tender process, the bidders will be asked to confirm their offers or they may choose to retire from the process at their discretion without losing the bid bond. Assessment and preparation by the prospective bidders. Following on from a successful PPP project screening, and once partnerships have been formed between like-minded organizations in the consortium, the two main activities that the prospective leaders will carry out are preparing the response to the procuring authorities RFP and making the investment decision about whether to submit a consortium response to it. Making the investment decision about whether to submit the RFP requires each individual member of the consortium and the consortium as a whole to acquire a deeper understanding of the main risk associated with the PPP project. Each consortium member will carry out a more in-depth assessment of the PPP project risk because each sponsor will need to assess 
whether its organization should make a decision to proceed with the PPP project and all sponsors acting together as a consortium will need to take a collective consortium decision about whether to proceed with responding to the RFP. Moreover, both the sponsors and the consortium will require a full analysis of the commercial risk associated with the procuring authorities PPP project, including an appraisal of any threats to the forecasted project revenues. Additionally, consideration will be given to any regional or country risk. Evaluation of proposals. There are two main types of processes in terms of evaluation criteria. Processes based only on price in brackets or least cost selection in which the technical factors are evaluated on a pass or fill basis. This is sometimes called an option for asset monetization, PPPs only. That is PPPs that are concessions out of existing revenue making infrastructure or greenfield or yellow field user pace projects that are likely to generate an excess of revenue over cost. Processes based on price in combination with qualitative factors basically related to the quality of the technical offer. This may be referred to as quality and cost-based selection, QCBS, or most economically advantageous tender, MEAT. A price-only evaluation evaluates the quantity of a product offered for a certain price of the total budget allocated by the contract. This quantitative approach is not advisable for most PPPs, as a project solution defined by the government should reflect the total need assessed in project selection and or the scope should be clearly defined as a required solution. The criteria will usually reflect requirements within the procurement framework, for example, inclusion or not of qualitative criteria, maximum or minimum wins for price versus qualitative criteria, and so on. Negotiation with a preferred bidder. Before implementation of the project begins, the government and the successful bidder may have additional steps that must be completed. The successful bidder may need to complete the financing arrangement for the PPP. It must also sign contracts with other parties involved in the PPP structure, such as subcontractors and insurance companies. The executing agency usually also has to perform certain tasks, such as obtaining permits, detailed contract management protocols, and manuals are also developed during this period. The completion of some or all of these items before the contract comes into effect are usually conditions precedent to the contract. A major difference between procurement approaches in different countries is in the extent to which the government enters into negotiations with the preferred but not yet successful bidder following the evaluation process or prior to the award of the contract. The need for post-bid negotiation can arise for a range of reasons, including those listed below. The RFP requirements or draft contract may not have been clear, for this may not have been identified during the RFP clarification process. The RFP requirements or drafts or draft contracts may not have been acceptable to bidders and their lenders. Negotiation can enable the parties to reach a mutually agreeable position. It also reduces the risk of issues arising later in the life of the project due to a lack of clarity in the documentation or a lack of consistency between the bidder's proposal and the contract. However, Negotiating at any stage can be challenging, and negotiation creates a risk of reducing the transparency of the bid process. 
the challenge can be even greater once a preferred bidder has been identified, as the preferred bidder will consider itself to be in a strong position in the negotiations. For this reason, care should be taken during the structuring of the tender and the contracts to ensure that the documents are clear and the risk allocation will be acceptable to bidders. If negotiations are required and are allowed under the applicable framework, the negotiation process must be carefully managed to ensure that legitimate issues are resolved within the preferred bidder gaining a better position at the expense of the government. Due to the risk associated with negotiation, some governments do not allow negotiation of the terms of the contract at any stage of the process. Although room for negotiation on bidder's proposal may remain. Once any negotiations have been completed, it is good practice to require the preferred bidder to resubmit his proposal amended to reflect the negotiations. It is also good practice for the government to assess whether the proposal as updated retains value for money and whether it remains appropriate to award the contract to the preferred bidder. Award, contract, and signature. After the tender is evaluated, according to the relevant criteria provided in the RFP and any negotiations are satisfactorily completed, the award decision is made by the relevant authority, usually based on the recommendation made by the evaluation team. In some countries or jurisdictions, this does not imply definitive selection because endorsement of decision may be required at the higher level, for example, by the cabinet. Bidders may also challenge the evaluation decision within a certain time limit, which is known as a standstill period. This standstill period can be beneficial to ensure that any challenges to the process are made promptly and not strategically deferred by the losing bidders. If all necessary endorsements have been received and if there are no appeals, the award decision will become definitive and in some countries will be published in the respective official journal, although this is not a universal practice. After official or definitive awarding, the winning bidder awardee be called for the contract signing. If there's a delay in the awarding process beyond the timelines provided in the RFP, the procuring authority should consider whether the winning bidder will still be capable of meeting the contractual milestones and the commitment made in his bid. Risk associated with such delay may be mitigated by establishing realistic timelines for the award process from the outset and ensuring that decision makers understand the risk. The risk of a challenge to the tender or award process is considered higher in PPPs than in the conventional procurement. For mitigation, the procuring authority must have some preparation and procurement processes and a legal team and relevant subject matter experts with the ability to resolve disputes in the interest of, the, of moving the process forward. Challenges may come after tender launch or after award of the contract. In the later case, they will usually be based on potential deviations from the evaluation and selection rules set out in the RFP. If there is a legal challenge to an award decision, the procuring authority must engage legal resources and relevant subject matter experts to respond to the challenge and defend the award decision. It is possible that no bidders will submit, which constitutes a clear process failure. This is best avoided by having a well-planned and well-structured tender process 
a variation of the situation is when there are proposals, but all of them are regarded as irresponsive, typically due to a lack of financial or commercial feasibility. This can be related to an insufficiently high price ceiling or possibly other factors related to risk. In such cases, it is not uncommon for the authority to open a negotiation process with the best proposal why a redefinition of the project subject to a reassessment or reappraisal will be more appropriate. It is also possible that only one bidder submit or more than one bidder submit, but only one meets both the qualification requirements and the requirements of a valid bid. This can place the procuring authority in a difficult position. The procuring authority is in a weak bargaining position. If it chooses to engage in direct negotiation with the sole bidder, as there is no alternative bidder to turn to if a satisfactory outcome cannot be agreed. Some governments prevent this situation arising by requiring that there be a minimum of two valid bids in order of the procuring authority to award the contract. Once the contract has been awarded, necessary steps are taken to proceed to the signing of the contract by both parties. Upon award, the successful bidder, also called preferred bidder, and some will be required to sign the contract within the periodic prescribed in the, in the RFP. Before the deadline expires, the successful bidder will have to meet certain prior conditions as established in the RFP. The following conditions are typically included establishment of a special purpose vehicle, SPV, that will be the, that will be the concessionaire, contracting insurance policies, financial clues. award contract and signature, and the winner is, once the prior conditions are fulfilled, the PPP contract will be signed with the SPV, and the successful bidder will officially become a contractor. If the winning bidder is not able to fulfill all of the conditions before the deadline, or refuses to sign the contract, if the winning bidder is not able to fulfill all of the conditions before the deadline or refuses to sign the contract, the public authority may apply liquidated damages and or make a call against the bid bond when a bond or guarantee was required with the, submission, with the bid submission. If that occurs, the authority will usually call the next ranked bidder to sign the contract or may decide to reissue the tender. During this period, it is common for both the authority and the preferred bidder or successful proposal to agree on certain minor changes in the contract to resolve mistakes or clearly or clarify ambiguities. It may also be necessary to incorporate specific features of the winning bidder's proposal into the contract. In most jurisdictions, any material change that would potentially result in another bidder bidding differently if they were common, if they knew of the change is forbidden. This is good practice in terms of PPP strategy and framework. In these cases, the border between a clarification and a change may be subtle and such changes requested by the preferred bidder should be carefully assessed by the procuring authority before it decides whether to agree to them even at the risk of the contract not being signed and a need for retendering. If the contract is made public, it is good practice to redact and genuinely proprietary or commercially sensitive information 
where disclosure may disadvantage the winning bidder by making this information available to competitors. Failing to redact such information may deter companies from bidding. In addition, in some projects, such as both in the defense sector, the government may need to exempt some contractual material from disclosure for public interest reasons. It is good practice for the procuring authority to debrief both the successful and unsuccessful bidders after the contract has been executed. In each case, the debriefing can the debriefing be directed at providing each bidder with general information on how it can better meet the government's expectation in future projects. Financial close means that the financing documents have been signed, but also assure availability of financing. It is a stage with a high degree of variation in market factors among jurisdictions. In some jurisdictions, the contract provides a limited time from six months to 18 months after contracted, signing in with the private partner must arrange, finance, and execute the financial agreement. In other jurisdictions and processes, typically negotiated or dialogue processes, bidders have already arranged the finance prior to the contract award and financial close occurs soon after commercial close. No matter when financial close occurs, that milestone will have implications for the authority. In all cases, the authority will have to validate the financial agreement to check that they do not contravene the provisions of the contract or represent any direct link or additional responsibility not considered in the contract. It is common for the authority especially in emerging markets, to acknowledge the contract and specifically validate the lender's right as agreed and described in the contract. It is common for the authority, especially in emerging markets, to acknowledge the contract and specifically validate the lender's right as agreed and described in the contract. For example, the lender's right to step in and cure defaults. During the financial close period, there's a degree of alignment between the authority and the private partner. It is generally in both parties' interest to promptly achieve financial close so that this finance is available for the project to proceed. Another type, another typical issue that may have implication for the procuring authority during the financial close period is the use of the base interest rate risk sharing mechanisms. In some projects, the procuring authority will bear part or all of the risk that base interest rates changes in the period before financial close. Example of bidding periods in different countries. Philippines. Project, Cavite Laguna Expressway, Sector, Road, Tender Process, Single Stage Open Tender, Bidding Period, Number of Days, 70, Brazil, Project, Hospital, De Zona North Amagons, Sector, Health, Tender Process. Single stage open tender, bidding period number of days, 106. Australia, Raven All Prison Project, sector, prison, tender process, two state tender with short listing and interactive tender process, bidding period number of days, 147. South Africa, God Train Rapid Rail Link, sector, rail, tender process, two state tender with shortlisting and interactive tender process. Number of days, 180. Questions?
Thank you. Participants are encouraged to kindly post their questions, comments, and contributions on the dedicated course discussion board. Thank you for your time.